Hi there, my name's Rue, and I want you to meet my new best friend. His name's Lumpy. Well, um, that's what I call him, but his whole name is, uh... Heffridge Trumpler, Brumpy, Heffalump the Fourth. He's a Heffalump. I'd never seen a Heffalump before I met Lumpy, but I heard Heffalumps have been around for a real long time. Heffalumps have always been around, but no one's actually really seen one, so we get to answer the question. What's a Heffalump? What's, What's a, a Heffalump? I think it's a tiny rooster. Caterpillar? A gorilla? <laughs> In the original literature, uh, Heffalump was meant to be the child's mispronunciation of elephant. They kind of look and walk and sound like elephants, but they're really not elephants. They're just basically uh, a big bowl of fun and full of life. <laughs> Before I met Lumpy, I didn't even know what a heffalump looked like. So I asked around, starting with my friend Tigger. Hmm, you got me there. They could be green and pink. With tusks that's hairy with a big old nose. They also have antennas. It does sound rather heffalumpish. At one point we thought plaid. Plaid could be really great for Lumpy. Well, most of the Pooh characters are actually stuffed animals, and so we want to make Lumpy a stuffed animal as well. And that was kind of the fun of <laughs> conceiving of him is, you know, he's got stitching and threads for hair and stuff like that. A heffalump would be exactly like an elephant, but the way a child would dream it. It would be if a, if a little boy or a little girl had seen an elephant in a book and then had seen it in his dreams. We wanted them to be part fantasy, part myth, part magical creature. Uh, we knew that we wanted him to be round and friendly and cuddly and stuff that would be fun to hold and hug and squeeze. Hot chicos! <laughs> One of the big problems that uh, heffalumps find themselves in is that, well, they're kind of, you know, chunky like uh, heffalumps are apt to be. But there's one thing heffalumps are really great at. They're great at cannonballing in lakes. Knowing what a heffalump looks like is pretty important when you're looking for one. But Lumpy taught me that it's awfully good to know what they sound like, too. We had to figure out what Lumpy sounded like, so we did a little research. <laughs> but unfortunately, that wasn't exactly right. <laughs> Lumpy's early attempts were these vocal gymnastics, gurgly, wet, Silly sounding. That's definitely an early heffalump call. All right, no more fun and games. Lumpy tells Rue that all heffalumps have a call, and when Lumpy manages to make his call, he has succeeded in coming of age and reaching adulthood. Maybe we never saw a heffalump before Lumpy, because we just didn't know where to look. Where's the place you go look for heffalump? In the ocean, in the zoo. A planet called Jupiter. Behold, heffalump hollow. Oh, oh, d -d 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 -ear. Characters in the Hundred Acre Wood uh, know that heffalumps come from heffalump hollow. It's really a little more lush and green and woodsy, but it's still just part of the Hundred Acre Wood. Uh, heffalumps dig these very snug little burrows, uh, and they stock them full of jams and jellies and all good things to eat because they love to eat. Uh, and they always gather at sunset to tell stories. I think they tell stories about growing up in Heffalump Hollow and traditional things. It's always around a fire, eating cookies. Now there was still one other thing that nobody knew. Something kind of, sort of, well, important. How does one capture a heffalump. Grab it and put it on your neck and hold it, either in a jar or... Go back to my house and grab it and try to catch it. We contacted experts. No one could tell us how to capture a heffalump, so we went to the Hundred Acre Wood, our friends in the Hundred Acre Wood. That's it. Traps. We need traps. Well, these Wellingtons here act as the counterweight for the bowling ball, mm -hmm. and the idea is that the heffalump comes along and jostles the chair, and it releases the bowling ball, mm -hmm. and while that's happening, uh, the fishing pole bounces back and uh, sets all this silverware, which is suspended through the colander here, 
to jangling, which is a kind of an alarm that lets uh, Tigger and Rabbit and everybody know that they've actually caught one. So they decide they need to build traps, but they have no idea what to use as bait. Well, they love to eat. They love to eat for sure, particularly cookies, and uh, the cookies really should have a lot of cinnamon in them. Uh, if they don't have any cookies on hand, they'll uh, be happy with a blueberry muffin, but only in a pinch. Uh, but they're a real favorite. They're a hands-down favorite. They really love rumple doodles. Authentic. Half a lump rumple, rumple doodles. doodles. Okay, what we're going to do, Frank, we're just okay. going to put all these dry ingredients okay. in, and then I need you to add some of these spices. Only the eastern half lump use nutmeg. This is cinnamon, which is the western half of half lump Paul's <laughs> recipe. Do this with your mom at home. It's okay to lick my finger, right? I mean, it's... Yes, it is. It's the best part of baking. That's right, it is. Oven should be preheated to 350 and grease your cookie sheet. Spoon the dough onto the cookie sheet, pop into the oven 10, maybe 15 minutes. And here are the rumple doodles. <laughs> Once we figured out how to catch a heffalump, my friends did something that had never, ever been done before. The first heffalump expedition in history. Tensions were definitely high. I mean, you could just feel there was something in the air. What we were doing was going to go down in the history books. All of that work, all of that preparation, all of that research was coming down to this one moment. And just as we were about to set out on our expedition. <laughs> Everybody calls me Lumpy. Lumpy. A real, live, breathing heffalump just jumped right out and introduced himself. I'll never forget. And he was really as nice as he could be, so everybody really became fast friends. Well, it shows us, I hope, that uh, many of us are afraid of someone that we don't know, and if we just took the time to get to know them, we might find out they're just like us. But what we learned is that you don't capture heffalump. It captures you. That's what Brew learned by letting Lumpy into his heart and home. Well, that's it. That's how Lumpy became our newest friend in the Hundred Acre Wood. And thanks to all my new friends. Welcome to the family, Lumpy. I'm so happy to 